Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic which is the topic of organic nutrients and how organic nutrients compare to mineral nutrients. What are they made of? Do plants see any difference when you use organic nutrients or mineral nutrients? And is one better than the other? So we're gonna talk about the chemistry of it and after that I'm going to show you some research around the topic of organic nutrients as they compare to mineral nutrients in hydroponics. So chemically speaking, plants need a bunch of essential nutrients to survive, mainly 13 elements that they require in order to survive. And the forms in which these elements are taken are for the most part the exact same thing between mineral nutrients and organic nutrients. So for example, let's take potassium. So potassium exists mainly as K plus ions. And this is the only form of potassium that plants will ever use. And this is exactly identical in both organic and mineral nutrient solutions. So no matter where this potassium comes from, whether it comes from fish emulsion or whether it comes from a synthetic salt, such as potassium nitrate, it will always be the exact same thing chemically. So there is absolutely no difference. And we have a bunch of ions for which this is the exact case. For example, we have calcium, which is taken as calcium plus two, magnesium, which is always taken as magnesium plus two, the exact same thing, regardless of the source. We have sulfur, which is taken as sulfate. We have iron, which is taken up as iron, normally iron plus two, sometimes iron plus three, but mostly iron plus two. Manganese, which we see taken up mostly as manganese plus two. Zinc, which is taken up as zinc plus two and then copper, which is taken up as copper plus two. These are mainly, mostly cations. We have an anion there, the sulfate, but these are, we could say, for the most part, identical in both cases. Whether the nutrient is organic or whether it is mineral, these ions will be the exact same thing. So is there any difference then? So you've noticed that some important nutrients are missing here. And this is because for some nutrients, there are, there are very important differences. Let's talk about nitrogen, which is one of the most important nutrients for plants and very different in both cases. So in the case of mineral nutrients, we have mainly nitrate salts and we have ammonium salts. And plants can uptake either of these, but they really prefer nitrate as their nitrogen source. So in a normal, let's say organic, in a normal mineral hydroponic solution, we will usually have our nitrogen split like this. So we will have most of it as nitrate and then we will have a small amount that is present as ammonium that we generally put in order to help with pH balance because ammonium uptake increases pH and nitrate uptake increases pH, ammonium uptake drops it. So if we introduce a little bit of ammonium, then we can balance the pH changes significantly. But then how, what about the organics? So organic sources of nitrogen are mostly from, well, are almost exclusively from animal or vegetable sources. And these have already been fixed and processed into proteins. So basically what we get in organic sources are proteins. So what happens with these proteins? Proteins have limited availability to plants because they are quite large. So plants cannot easily take them up. So proteins then need to break, be broken up into basically amino acids. So they are broken into aminos and then these are converted into ammonium. And then this ammonium is converted to nitrate. So in the end, this nitrate and this nitrate are exactly the same and this ammonium and this ammonium are exactly the same. But the distribution is very different. In the distribution of an, of an organic solution, we will have most of the nitrogen 
will usually be protein. And then we have most of the remainder, this, um, this thing will be aminos. Then we will have, let's say, a very small amount as ammonium, and then an even smaller amount as nitrate. So although this chemical form and this chemical form are exactly the same, indistinguishable, the presence in organic nutrients is way reduced. And there's also an additional caveat, which is that plants not only uptake these two, but they can also uptake this. So they can also uptake aminos and they can also uptake proteins to some extent. So in an organic solution, we have the same things that we have here. So we have these two are identical, but we have these two additional things that plants can uptake. Is it better if they uptake these two things instead of these two things? We know they only need these two to grow. So these are sorts of additional things that they can take up, but it doesn't mean that it's better if they take them up. It is also interesting to note that this process here is carried out by what we call nitrifying bacteria, which are the bacteria that carry out this entire process of turning proteins into nitrate. And this process only happens at relatively high pH. So, or it is favored at relatively high pH. So this is why we have in a mineral, in a mineral grown crop, we have the pH is usually uh, between 5.8 and let's say 6.2. So it's kept in this range ideally. And then in an organic crop, we will see the pH usually shift more widely, but it will be commonly between 6.5 and 7.5. And this is the case because the bacteria that carry out this process will favor a pH in this region and they will fight to buffer the solution to this region between 6.5 and 7.5. So while the uptake of many of these things is not favorable between 6.5 and 7.5, this process that turns nitrogen that's in proteins into nitrate is favored at these pH values. So this is an important thing to consider. Now, the other nutrient that we're missing is phosphorus. Now in phosphorus, we have in mineral hydroponics, we generally use monopotassium phosphate, KHH2PO4, or ammonium phosphate as our main sources of phosphorus because these are soluble, readily available, cheap. Um, so we usually pick these two up. However, these two do not exist in nature as minerals because they are too soluble. And there are very, 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 very few sources of soluble phosphorus that exist in nature um, in the, as minerals. So in organics, what tends to happen is that we use less soluble forms of um, phosphorus, mainly calcium phosphates, different types of calcium phosphates which are generally things like bone meal uh, or let's say rock phosphate. So these are things of the, let's say, calcium phosphate family. Although not exactly calcium phosphate because these minerals are different and they have a slightly different chemical composition, they are all basically insoluble calcium phosphates. So there are soli some soluble alternatives in the organics. For example, we have, um, let's say, some of these mono monocalcium phosphate that we can find as seabird guano. And then this here that you have, this monopotassium phosphate is identical to this one you have here, chemically identical in seabird guano. So you have sources that are sort of exactly the same, but then mostly we use these insoluble sources that are used as amendments. Now, it is also worth pointing out that because of this higher pH in an organic crop, you will have your phosphorus as H2PO4, but you will also have your phosphorus as HPO4-2 because at this pH, this is further dissociated into this ion. 
So this anion has different uptake dynamics compared to this um, dihydrogen phosphate ion. So the hydrogen phosphate will play a role. Uh, this, uh, the pKa of phosphoric acid, the, it, this pKa of this reaction between these two is located at pH 7, around 7. So this means that there is a really strong chemical buffer around 7. So organic solutions can reach pretty stable pH values when they are doing chemical processing in that area. Now, to that note, we need to talk about are they better or worse? So is it better to have an organic solution where we have this process, where we have organic decomposition of proteins, where we have a higher pH, and where these are all basically in identical forms? Or is it better to just do like a regular hydroponic um, crop with mineral nutrients? So without going into the environmental sustainability of either approach, let's talk about whether in terms of yields and quality there is any difference. For that, I'm going to refer to this paper Effects of organic fertilizer with or without microbial inoculant on the growth and quality of lettuce in an NFT hydroponic system, where these researchers basically took lettuce in an NFT system and grew it with an organic fertilizer that is, that is basically a, a fermented molasses fertilizer, amended with a, an organic source of magnesium sulfate, like an, an organic magnesium sulfate, which means it's just directly mined magnesium sulfate, and they compared it with a regular mineral nutrient. So I wanna show you some of the results. So here you can see some of the results that they obtained. And I'm especially interested in the results that you see here where we have, they did two experiments. So they did one experiment where they uh, basically loaded the organic nutrients and did an entire crop cycle with lettuce and then they didn't change the organic nutrients but they just kept on going with the same nutrients just adding more nutrients on top to see what the effect of having all their organic nutrients would be versus the mineral nutrients. We can see that in the first experiment this is uh, the shoot fresh weight which is a good indication of the yield for the lettuce plants we have basically no statistical difference between the mineral here and the organic with microbial inoculant. As you saw here, we need those microbes to perform this process. So microbes tend to be fundamental to the yield of organic crops. And there is no statistical difference between this yield and this yield here. In terms of dry weight, we are at a very, very close point, but it is better, the mineral is better here. And then when we go to the second crop, we have significant underperformance of the organic variants versus the mineral nutrients, just because the organics have already gone through um, a phase with their, where they've lost a lot of their nutrients and where they've gone into organic processes that are not that favorable. And I want us to look at this chart here where we can see the EC and the pH evolution of these organic fertilizers. So we have here the organic fertilizers, the EC, and this is the mineral nutrients. And here we have the pH of the organics, and this is the pH of the minerals. As you can see, the pH of the organics goes up to this 6.5 to 7.5 region, and then goes down, but it's, it basically goes up here very quickly. And as the microbial process that keeps the pH here runs out of fuel, so to speak, the pH starts going down. And in the second crop, we have that the pH is basically everywhere for the organics. It goes, still goes up to seven sometimes, but then at the end it drops to near five because there are some decomposition processes that bring the pH down. So when they run out of enough substrate for this nitrification process, then they start going down to this region. And the, interestingly, the EC for the second crop remains fairly stable. While in the first, we saw that the EC for the organics went up. So it is pretty evident here that the mineral solutions are way more stable. And this is because the mineral solutions have no important chemical processes going on besides plant uptake of nutrients. And we can regulate the pH and the EC by adjusting the composition and by adjusting this nitrate to ammonium ratio. While in an organic solution, we need to deal with this entire process of nitrification that goes on 
where proteins are turned into ammonium and nitrate. However, interestingly, as we saw before, the yields can be very similar for a plant like lettuce. So this means that even though we have a much smaller percentage of nitrate, that percentage of nitrate is enough to keep the plants fed. This does not mean that the plants are uptaking mainly amino acids because we know that's not true. You can watch my video on carbon in hydroponics to learn more about that. But that small amount of nitrate that is converted every day is enough for the plant to consistently uptake and reach normal levels of growth. It is interesting to note here as well that you, if you change your nutrients every crop cycle, you are likely to always obtain basically equivalent results with your um, organic hydroponic nutrients. And why wouldn't you if in the end we are talking about most things are exactly the same and then some things are chemically different, but as we saw in the study, the fact that we can get microbes that carry out this process means that we end up, can end up getting enough of, of, these, of these nitrate. So when you go for an organic hydroponic nutrient, you just need to make sure that your nutrient ratios are these nutrients here are the same as you would use in a mineral crop. And you also need to make sure that you have enough protein to sustain all the nitrogen uptake of the plant and that you have enough microbes to carry out this process. You also need to ensure that your nitrification processes are going on and you don't need to worry so much about keeping the pH at the region that we keep it in mineral crops because the bacteria here will fight you and if you try to add things like uh, acetic acid or citric acid or things like that to keep the pH low, that won't be effective. So if we want to keep the pH stable in an organic crop, then we can keep it in this region. And as you saw, that can give us perfectly viable results. There is no need for us to obsess with keeping an organic crop in the same range as a normal mineral crop. And this is because in an organic crop, we have all these other processes going on. And as you can see, that can lead to normal growth. In a normal, mineral crop we cannot keep the pH this high because we don't have all of this going on and these although these things are not uptaking mainly um, in order to grow the plant like these are not main nitrogen sources for the plant these things here can affect the uptake of these things here so only in an organic crop does a pH from 6.5 to 7.5 allow for the proper absorption of most nutrients so I hope you enjoyed this video about some of the basics of mineral versus organic nutrients, at least from a chemical perspective. I hope I see you on the next video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one and bye.